Alright, hello everyone. Welcome back to another Legitimate SMP episode. So I have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is going to come first. I am not going to build my mega base that I was going to build in Season 2. Instead, I am going to build a base that no one can find. Well, at least a hidden base for my mega base. And basically, that's going to be all, really. There is reasons why I'm kind of scared to build a mega base on the server. I've heard a lot of people saying on the server, jokingly, I know, but it didn't feel like a joke sometimes. Um, and I, I think I'm taking a bit too literally and being a bit paranoid, but I don't want my mega base castle to blow up if I'm proud of it, you know? So, um, yeah, that's why I'm kind of trying to conceal my mega base and... I just don't want the risk of it getting trapped. Now you might be asking, what, what is going on? Like, why aren't you building this? Is there any other motives and stuff? Well, yes, cause um, I got a DM from my ch fellow friend, Chicken Pig. She basically told me that there was traps under the trees and nearby my base. Um, so, as you guys may know, that that's a threat to me. Um, knowing that, that that could also mean that there could be potential traps in my mega base, which is why I'm kind of concealing it. And for the fun, for the sake of fun, I'm not gonna get mad at whoever did this. I know it was just a silly prank and stuff, but I do want to find out who did this and get to the bottom of this, just for the sake of having some sort of related content to it. I kind of want to dig deeper and like interrogate members and stuff. I just think it'd be cool. I'm just doing this for content. Just don't worry, I'm not actually mad at anyone for doing this. But yeah, anyways, it'd be fun to do that. Um, I don't think this episode we will do this, but yeah. Now what I'm going to do this episode, as you guys might know from my first episode, I found a village just up here. And what I'm planning to do is basically make a villager breeder. Usually what I do in every single season, the second episode. <laughs> it, it seems to be a trend on my channel, but you know, it is what it is. So if we go up here, you can kind of see what I'm going to be building. And we're going to need some villagers this season, that's for sure. Just for like um, basic enchantments and I'll also just to get some food, really, because I think villager trading is the best way to get food. Um, but without further ado, I think what I want to do is potentially grab some of these for the farmer trades, especially, um, and just kind of hoard them so nobody else takes them before me. And I, I believe we have two villagers trapped in this village, but I don't recall where they are don't think they are here. Um, oh, there's one. Well, no, this, this is, this is not the villager we want, that's for sure. So it appears we only have two villagers in our village. One is already traded with, so that means the villager trading design thing that I have will not work exactly, which means one other thing. We need to kind of Nope, you're not escaping, sir. We need to breed them manually, which is fine by me. But we're gonna have to basically make a trading hall underneath the ground a bit and just kind of have a place where... where we can um, have all the villagers, which is gonna be he here, basically. And yeah, that that's kind of what we're <laughs> planning. We're not really thinking of anything else. That's, um... Yeah. <laughs> we are not- We do not have enough villagers to make the breeder that I wish to have, but we can still breed them manually, which is why I'm kind of making this hole here. We're just kind of a hole of villagers with just a chaotic mess of tables and stuff, and we're not gonna know which one is which, but that's still fine, at least if it's some sort of villager thing then I, I, I assume it's going to be fine. But basically we're thinking of having it right here and just um, we're gonna breed a bunch of villagers in there once we have the materials to. And 
we're just gonna see how it goes. I know we're gonna make a bunch of stations and stuff, and yeah, the basics, you know. This is looking, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, completely ugly right now, but I'm hopeful that in the future this will look better, and I will actually put effort into making this look good. But for now, it's gonna be like this, and I need to remove this boat really quickly. And I actually don't know how villagers breed. Do, do you just need this, sir? Um, and do you need this? They need bit. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> looks like um, I kind of overlooked that. Ah uh, ha Okay. Thank you. Thank you, dear friend. Thank you. Let's go get some then. <laughs> Since we have a current lack of food, I think the best possible thing that we could do at the moment is just craft up some composters for the villagers so we can trade with them. I keep looking in the furnace for some reason. <laughs> but anyways, um, that should give us a couple of composters to work with. But I think this will be good for now since we are currently lacking food and this uh, ideal trades would be farmer trades. And this is mainly because golden carrots, and we all know that's the best food in the game that you can possibly get. Because they give you, I'm pretty sure, saturation for longer. Which is good, usually. Because um, most foods don't give as much saturation as, like, per se, golden carrots and steak. So, um, golden carrots is the easier option, since you don't really need to hunt down a bunch of cows or breed a bunch of cows, you could just trade with villagers and then you're kind of good to go. The struggle we are currently having with the villagers is not breeding them. We already have them all bred and stuff. It's just really getting the materials necessary for it. So we made some um, beetroot farms, potatoes, carrots down there, and then wheat is down here. But yeah, we, we kind of just set up a bunch of farms and now we're starting to do, set up a sugarcane farm so we can build some, we can craft some lecterns with it, stuff like that. Just so it's more like practical for the time being. And as you can see, we're pretty low on sugarcane at the moment. But once we get this rolling, we'll have our villager trays for the librarian ready, as well as the lecterns ready for the librarian as well. But yeah. Um, this is kind of what we've been doing these past couple of hours, besides me solving the mystery and kind of grinding it out, and yeah, that's really all. And we also have some pumpkins here as well. Uh, we didn't find melons since there's no melon biome yet, but hopefully when the birder expands we can find some. Since we had a couple of the villagers bred up already and everything, I decided to go on a bit of a mining trip when I found myself to realize something about this whole TNT tree trap mystery. As I'm caving here, I think I have a theory on who could be the possible culprit for these pranks on the server. So I'm thinking about it more from a logical perspective and you need courts for an observer, correct? And currently present thinks it's me and chicken because we disabled the traps for the thing, but if we think if you think about it you guys have never seen me go to nether i don't have another portal look at me this is what i have right now and i'm literally going caving right now just for diamonds and if you look at if you really think deeply into it yesterday i saw zolak to get the achievement we need to go deeper which means you go to nether right and he was the only one i know of that has been to nether meaning he can be the only culprit on my list at the moment that has done the tree traps so apparently the same thing has happened to present and he's putting the blame on us for some reason but i tried to make him think more logically about it because in theory it cannot be us because we never got the achievement to go to another and you need courts in order to get an observer so yeah that that's my only reason i can think of that it's select and no one else but if i am wrong guys please do tell me and if anyone knows i i would love some insights on everything 
and I'm talking especially to the legitimate s and on, like, evidence and stuff. I just don't- I don't want- I'm not mad at the person who did this, like I said before. I just want to know who did it, just for the content. Mm. But I'm glad I actually solved this in, within the second episode. This is- well, almost. I don't know if it's correct, the theory, but it's a theory, you know? But, uh, speculation is what gets you to the right answer. So, yeah. But I'm also open to other answers as well, because, obviously, it, 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 there's some reasons that it couldn't be so looked either. For instance, someone might else might have the achievement as well. You never know. But, anyways, um... Yeah, this mystery is still ongoing and it's not completely solved until I expose who actually did it with the evidence I have. And the thing is, the time frame and this in which this happened, so yesterday I was on at like 10 p.m. and I saw him get the achievements, right? So when I logged off, this could have happened between then and when I got on the SMP today, which is around like 3 p.m. So between those times, that means Zolect as the most active member is also pretty guilty I have to say but if there's any evidence that goes against him I, I need proof I need proof that there's evidence going against him which is why I'm I'm thinking what if I just you know expose him a little um, I, I wouldn't be a bad thing I'm not gonna do it this episode but episode 3 for sure I wasn't expecting to solve this this fast but there you go um but yeah, if it's not Zolect, then we are going back to the drawing board, that's for sure.